Hello everyone, I'm Louise Scammell and I'm a printmaker based at Art House South Brent. Today I'm going to talk a little bit more about dry point printmaking and so far we've been looking at perspex, printing on perspex as a material. Today I'm going to talk about printing on a different material, um, polypropylene and polycarbonate. And first of all we're going to look at an example. This is an example of a print which is done on polypropylene. It's a matte material, the plate is on top of the print here and as I peel it off you can see it. Um, there are areas of grey and areas of white here and very dark areas which have been worked into using the dry point tool. So how's it done? Well I've used um, two things, I've used a dry point tool and I've used a varnish, which has been uh, applied to areas like this to create these very pale tones. I'm now going to show you a print and a plate, first of all a plate, which is a clear polycarbonate material. Uh, this is similar to your Perspex in that its shiny surface doesn't hold ink until you work into it and here I've worked some lines into it and in fact I've cross hatched an area here and then I've cut it to create these areas which create an embossed print. I don't know if this will show very clearly but it depends how well the shadows show on there. Here there's a ridge where in fact the paper when it went through the press has embossed and left a ridge in it. I'm going to go back now to the polypropylene material and I'm just going to show you how I create an image using this material. It does in fact have two sides. One is usually slightly rougher than the other and on here just for my, um, you know, I know which side it is. I put on here rough and smooth. It sounds really silly but it does help because sometimes you just forget. And what I've done here is on one of my sketches, I've just drawn over it and I've used something like um, a permanent marker. You can use a thicker one. Um, they're slightly more clumsy, but they still work. So if you don't have a very fine marker, um, a thicker one will do. And then I want to scratch it. So I want to use the smoother side to work into. And I'm just gonna get my black paper back here. And again, it's probably easier to use a dark background um, when you're working into the material because you can usually see your lines a little more clearly. Uh, it feels slightly different from Perspex. Um, it's slightly more sticky to work, but don't worry about that because um, it does create a burr in the material. And as you can see from my prints, it does hold the ink really well. So for example, if I wanted to create a grey tone here, I can work into the material by creating lines as before um, with the Perspex. If you wanted that to be very pale grey, you could just leave it because the ink will hold in those little tiny marks in there and just leave a grey colour. And then if you want to create white areas, this is where the magic varnish comes in. And you can apply it obviously using a fine brush like that. But if, for example, you didn't have a brush, um, most people have a cotton bud at home. And what I've done here, and I can't find it now, but I will, <laughs> is I've cut the top off one of these. And um, you can use these. Well, I'll show you. I'll just cut the top of one of these off now. Um, and you can apply the ink, not the ink, the um, clear varnish here using one of these and I'm just going to apply some here um, and you can see there that actually you know it works fine um, and then you can leave that. What I would suggest you do is you do your dark marks first and then when you come to do your pale tones you do those at the end and then what you need to do is leave those to dry and don't be tempted to smudge it or play with it, just let that dry completely. And then when it's dry, you can add another coat. 
And what that will do is make a difference um, as to how much ink you're preventing from sitting on the plate. And there's an example here where I can show you that there's different tones even within this mark here. Well, you can see I've applied quite a lot of the varnish here where it's very white and maybe not so much here. So it, there's lots of possibilities with this material. And, and don't feel threatened about what image you want to do. You, you can completely cheat here by using, well, I've got a photograph I took um, here of a cormorant. And for example, I could even use that um, and work through and draw some lines doing that. So have fun and, and play with um, the materials and um, yeah, good luck. That's all for now.